Grace and peace to you, all my beloved. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved, this is Pastor Pimpo here. Today is the 12th day of the ninth month of the year 2021. Wow, the days are running. The temperature 61 degrees Fahrenheit, making it 16.1 degrees Celsius. That is how uh, cool the weather is here. Nice weather. And by the grace of God, I am well here. And you are also well wherever you are. Listen, the Lord is good. The Lord is bountifully good. You know, today I want us to examine the word of God. Today is Sunday. And this morning, there's a word that I want us to share in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 22. When I read, when read it, just, you know, cut into my heart something that we all need to hear. It opens up, it says, Now the feast of unleavened bread, you know, drew nigh, which is also called the Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, you know, and Jesus Christ was, you know, preparing his disciples, they will go and have the Passover dinner, you know, and he said to and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Just look at this. The Passover feast is approaching. A time when everybody is excited. Something like, you know, Christmas or whatever they celebrate, people good to have, enjoy a meal. At a time when such a great event is planned. You have the chief priest and the scribes plotting to kill Jesus Christ. But when, sometimes when you look at it, you say, why should they do this? No, but just look at it. At the Passover, they have to sacrifice a lamb. They have to kill and slaughter a lamb. So this really gives you a picture of what God intends to do. That Jesus Christ is actually the sacrificial lamb. They were planning to slaughter Christ, but they couldn't do it because of the crowd. They couldn't. They couldn't do it. Then in verse 3, and that is where I want us to keep our focus. In verse 3, something happens. It says, And then entered Satan into Judas. Can you imagine? Then entered Satan into Judas. It takes me back to the book of John, chapter 14, verse 30. Jesus Christ tells his disciples, I will not speak to you any longer. For the prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me arise and let us go the prince of this world satan is coming and he has nothing in me but with judas the prince of this world as satan entered into him he entered into judas and that is where i want to talk i want us to talk about is Satan still entering into people today? Yes. Is he causing them to do things? Yes. Notice what Satan did when he entered into Judas. The Bible says immediately Judas arose and went his way and went and communed with the chief priests and the scribes how he will betray Jesus. How he will betray Jesus Christ. Now think about it. Satan entered into Judas so to enable Judas, to lead Judas, to enable Judas to betray Christ. Betray. Let me ask you something. When was the last time that somebody betrayed you? And when was the last time you also betrayed somebody? Let's take, for instance, marriage. You stood by the altar and you promise for better, for worse. Till death 
do we part? Minister stood there, proclaimed you married. And you, co you covenanted. You made a vow that your body is for the woman alone and your body is for the man. And that you will never, never abandon each other. Are you still together? That is, if you're a married person. Or for some reason, one of you has betrayed the other. What entered into you to cause you to betray your wife? And what entered into you to cause you to betray your husband? The same. You enter into a church he said, I have joined this church. I'm a member of the church. And on and on. But today you are outside of it. What cost you? Well, you may say that God told you to leave. My friend, let's not kid ourselves. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's not be lying. God has made, put everything in place for the local church. That if we have misgivings, if we have God's desire, is for the local church to be stay intact to be one. The only instance you saw, the Bible said there was a sharp division between Paul and Barnabas over John Mark. Because one wants to take John Mark, the other one said no. So Barnabas took John Mark, went his way, and Paul took Silas. Then the other instance, when they were all together, the Holy Spirit of God said, separate unto me Paul and Silas. So you see, that's God's way. God's way is not a split. That's sharp split. That's not God's way. But later on, they came back to God. He said, later, and Paul says, bring John, because he's profitable to me. Paul beckons. And Paul was saying, stay with Barnabas, walking with Barnabas. So you see, that was not God. God's way was for them to be together. But then Satan enters into the arena and causes a betrayer. He entered into Judas and led Judas. And Judas went to the commune with the priests, chief priests, and the scribes, how he will betray Jesus Christ. And they were, the Bible says, and they were glad. Can you imagine? They were glad. When was it that you have taken your pastor or taken your fellow brother, a Christian, and went to put him on the sacrificial altar of the scoffers and telling everything evil about him or her? To them, Psalm 1 says that blessed is he who doesn't sit in the council of the scoffers or sinners, all those things there. But you chose to go and sit with friends and put your fellow brother, a Christian, on a platter and slash him into pieces, betraying him. That and many, many more betrayer. Satan enters into us. Oh, no, I'm a Christian. Satan cannot enter into me. Oh, you are, don't, don't, please don't deceive yourself. Somebody, people have been telling you this, but don't. So, Satan is roaring like a lion, seeking who he may for. And he will look for the slightest opportunity to enter into you. And speak into you. And cause you to rise, go and gossip, lie, fornicate, and do all those things. Not only betray your fellow believers, but betraying Christ, the one who has redeemed you. Making a public shame of him. Satan entered into Judas. And Judas went and betrayed Jesus Christ. And they promised him money. And that even made him more eager. See? To do it. And he said he, he, he wanted to do it in the absence of the multitude, secretly. We betray each other secretly, privately. Sometimes you'll be walking and people, you don't know what, how people see you. They're looking at you through the eyes of somebody who has betrayed you to them. That was Judas. That spirit that entered into Judas is still in, entering into people today. My beloved, are you a candidate? Are you one of the candidates? that sit, allow Satan to enter into you and cause you to go and do damage to your fellow brother or sister? 
Are you one of the candidates who Satan enters into to cause you to go and cause damage, damage to your pastor? All because perhaps he has preached something that you don't like. Or perhaps he's one who is very strict and, so, and doesn't allow you room to do what you want to do, flesh, flesh wise. And so you choose to go and betray him. Or Satan enters into you because you to choose to, to betray your own parents, your father and your mother, all because they seem to be standing in your way. They will not allow you to do what you want to do, the evil you want to do. Beloved, there are a lot of things that you and I can think about. But my prayer today that we will learn a lesson. We have to know that Satan looks for just a small opening in our lives and he will enter in. May we be like Jesus Christ. He said, the prince of this world is coming. He has nothing in me. Oh, that we will be able to say that Satan has nothing in us. That Satan has nothing in us. Because Satan only looks for that platform in your life, which is his to enter you into you and to stage all that he wants to do. The Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonians, it says, mark those who cause divisions amongst you and have nothing to do with them. They'll come in sheep's clothing, but inside them are ravenous wolves, sowing seeds of discord, lying, deceit, and all that. These are people whom Satan has gained an entrance into their hearts and using them to create havoc in the lives of many. Beloved, I pray that you and I will not be one of those who Satan gets access into our lives. Remember, Judas was with Jesus Christ. He was among the 12. He knew Christ face to face. And yet, Satan, like I said, Satan has always been say, I've always been saying he's no respecter of persons. No, he's not. He's not afraid of you. He only looks for a smart, slightest opening. He will enter in and use you to create havoc. Paul writes about said, Alexander the Copper Smith. <laughs> he said, did me wrong. Satan entered intensely to him, Alexander the coppersmith. What does he do? To try to undermine the work that God was using Paul to do. Demas abandoned him because of the love for the world. Demas abandoned Paul. And Paul writes, so sadly, Demas has left me. What entered into Demas? Satan. The love of the world tried to pull him away. Beloved, may we, I pray, may we not leave an opening in our lives for Satan to enter in and to use us to do that which is contrary to the will of God. Betraying one another. Betray. You know what a betrayer is? Somebody who, somebody has placed so much trust and confidence in you trust you but that you let the person down that's betrayer judas was accountant he was a treasurer jesus had so much trust in him so much that he allowed him to hold to be the keeper of money the treasury and yet guess who betrayed jesus christ the same person the same person beloved may we not be like that Okay, may we not be like that. May we not allow Satan to enter into us to cause us to betray one another. Grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.